By now, a lot of you have probably seen the news that a piece of digital artwork by the artist known as Beeple sold for $69 million. Nice. And it was sold as an NFT or non-fungible token on the Ethereum blockchain. And these are all the rage these days, except unlike a lot of other kind of underground stuff, this was pretty mainstream. And a big part of that is because it was actually sold through Christie's Auction House, which is a very old, well-known auction house based in London. I think it's over 250 years old. So when a lot of news organizations found out, not just because of the price tag, but also where it was sold, this very well-known mainstream auction house, it kind of got a lot of people's attention for a lot of factors. But this event didn't just come out of nowhere. It's not like it went from zero to 69 million. NFTs, non-fungible tokens have really been all the rage very recently. And a lot of random little pieces of artwork online have been selling for tens of thousands of dollars through Ethereum. So is this whole thing a bubble? Well, in my opinion, almost definitely, but that doesn't mean that NFTs still won't be popular in the future and you should ignore them because I do think NFTs will have important uses in the future, just not for just artwork being sold at thousands of ridiculous prices and insane prices in general. I think it will have uses, just not with the hype associated that we're seeing today because it's so new. So this is gonna be more of a high level intro type discussion, not gonna go super duper in depth because a lot of you probably just wanna know what the heck NFTs are in the first place. Like I mentioned, NFT stands for non-fungible token, and these exist on a blockchain, just like cryptocurrencies do, except they have a little bit of a different purpose. So cryptocurrency usually is just used exclusively for sending money and exchanging value. The Ethereum blockchain is another type of cryptocurrency, technically a crypto token, which can also do other stuff like sending contract data. So it can actually do more stuff than just transmitting value. The Ethereum blockchain really can do programmatic stuff and run programs on it, Although sometimes because of fees, it's not really feasible to do that compared to offline using like a regular database or something, but it does have that possibility. And one of the possibilities is just creating different types of tokens that have different types of rules associated with it. And an NFT is one of those specifically being non-fungible. So let me quickly go over the concept of fungibility and non-fungibility because this is not a new thing at all. So say you have a dollar bill and you can trade it for another one, no difference. If you go to a store and, and you give them a dollar bill, it's not like they're gonna ask you, wait a minute, where did you get this dollar bill? We only take dollar bills that were sourced from the bank. And if you got this from your friend, well, we don't want this dollar bill. No, it's not like that. A dollar bill is just a dollar bill. And the same thing goes with Bitcoin. If you deposit Bitcoin in your wallet, it all just goes together. It's not like each individual little piece of Bitcoin has its own identifier to track where it came from. Now you can, of course, using the Bitcoin ledger, track where transactions came through, but it's not like each individual Bitcoin in itself gets traced of where it was from, just amounts. In other words, fungible just means that it's treated as being indistinguishable or exactly the same as another object or thing of that type. On the other hand, non-fungible means that a thing or object or whatever is considered to be unique and can't be replaced by just any other one, even if it is exactly the same type of thing. That specific individual one is unique and known to be different. For example, there might be a unique piece of artwork or a rare trading card, and you could say, well, there were multiple of the trading cards printed. Well, you could also then look and say that, okay, but the condition of each one is unique, and that makes it identifiable and distinguishable from the other ones, because you can look at the condition. This one's way better condition, and that makes it non-fungible compared to the others. Now, that being said, just because something is non-fungible and unique doesn't mean it actually has value. If I spend five seconds drawing a smiley face and then call it art, yes, it's non-fungible because that's the only one that I ever drew. And even if I try to draw one a little bit differently, the first one will be a little tiny bit different. It's non-fungible, but that doesn't mean that it has any value and no one's gonna actually pay for it. And also fungibility can be sort of subjective and relative depending on how you look at it. So say you take a penny, it's a very rare penny. This penny is still worth one cent, even compared to a very common newly minted penny that is from today that everybody has. You could look at a penny from a hundred years ago. It's the only one in existence and say, well, that's fungible because it's still worth a penny just like all the other ones. But then if you went to a collector, you, they could say, no, that one's completely different and unique. Look at the condition of this one. It's so old. There's no other one like this one. So depending on how you look at it, it could be non-fungible. Some things at least could be non-fungible or fungible depending on what type of way you're considering. But in the context of NFTs, basically we're just saying it's non-fungible because each individual token 
has a unique identifier attached to it. So it's not like if you deposit multiple of these into a wallet that they'll be just mixed together. Each one will keep its identifier separate. So let me do a little bit more explaining behind the context of NFTs and NFT items and stuff like that, because mostly you've probably seen NFTs talking about NFT artwork, but it doesn't have to be artwork. It could be other things like a domain name where anyone who owns the NFT of a specific domain name in their wallet is able to control it. You could also have NFTs that correspond to real life things and then if you have that NFT, you get some kind of benefit in the real world because people recognize only the person who has this NFT is able to do this thing. And then that has value that way. And we'll get a little bit more in detail about some examples like that in a second. Another thing to understand is that NFTs for the most part are pretty standardized, which means that you can create an NFT and then any platform that is advertised as recognizing NFTs or collecting or whatever, we'll be able to also recognize those NFTs. So other services could integrate them. For example, maybe in the future, theoretically, if you had an NFT, maybe Instagram would allow you to integrate your wallet and look into your wallet and be able to show a list of your NFTs on your Instagram account or something and then people could see which ones you have, something like that. They're pretty standardized, so it's not like only one service supports it. Anyone could theor theoretically support. Another important thing having to do with NFTs is that they are verifiable as original. So you could say, wait a minute, what if I just create an NFT that is the same picture someone else made, then how would they know that mine is the actual real one? Well, basically, because it's on the blockchain, you can trace where the NFT token came from and originated. So basically the original artist who you know is the person who actually made it, they could say, hey, this is my wallet and only NFTs that originated from my wallet are original. So then if someone is disputing that, then they could look and trace back the transactions and where that thing was created. And a lot of platforms do this. They automatically are able to look and see which account created it. So you can know it's original and not some kind of copy. But again, it doesn't have to be an artist. Maybe if a company starts selling tickets to their event in the form of NFTs, then they could say, hey, only consider tickets valid that come from our wallet or originated from our wallet. Even if people send it around and sell it a thousand times, you can still trace it back and say, okay, but it originated in the original seller's wallet, therefore it's valid. So scalping might not be a thing, fake ticket scalping, you don't have to worry about that. Also, kind of like I hinted at, NFTs are easily tradable, just like any other cryptocurrency. So you can trade it and not have to worry about someone not scamming you because it's all kind of done in one transaction. The token only goes if the money comes in, so it's pretty easily tradable. And also in a similar vein, the NFTs are irrevocable, just like any other cryptocurrency amount or wallet. Once you have the cryptocurrency in your wallet, then no one can take it from you unless they somehow steal your seed, which obviously you need to protect like your bank account or even more so than your bank account. But in other words, if you have it in your wallet, then literally no one can take it, only you can transfer it out. No government, no bank, no, even the original creator can't take it out of your account. So what are some more examples of some NFTs being used right now? And then we could go over some potential future uses that people have been speculating about. So artwork, we kind of already went over that. Anyone can basically go on one of these platforms that lets you mint an NFT, and then you can put it on for sale, although of course probably no one's gonna buy it. Another thing you may have heard about are NBA Top Shots, which are officially licensed from the NBA. And basically, almost sort of like physical trading cards, these NBA Top Shots are NFTs that are video clips. So basically you open a virtual pack and then you get a number of video clips of memorable shots from NBA history on different games. And then you basically have a video clip. And then because it's an NFT, you get certification that it's your video clip. And these could be limited edition. So only a certain number of people can possibly get this one. And they're also numbered. And apparently there's over 40,000 people who have signed up for Top Shots. And a lot of these top end ones are going for like $100,000 for a digital video clip. And you could say, well, wait a minute, I can just take a picture or a screenshot of this clip. And wait a minute, didn't everybody watching that game see that clip happen when it broadcast live? Yeah, but it's just like a trading card. Okay, you can have a picture of a trading card, but the NFT, you have the NFT. You own the NFT, just like you own the card. That's kind of the idea behind it. You might think it's dumb. I don't, I'm not really a fan of NBA, so I think it's kind of dumb, but you can kind of see how people who are super duper into basketball might kind of be into this. Another totally different type of category of NFTs are blockchain domains, as an example. So you may know that cryptocurrency addresses, it's usually like a long string of numbers. It's almost random, basically, and it's really hard to memorize. You can't really memorize it. You always have to copy and paste it, where the idea is that you buy a domain that is attached 
to the blockchain, such as the .crypto domain name or .eth domain name. And these exist as a protocol on the specific blockchain, not like the web. So if you go to one of these on a website, it's not really gonna bring anything up. But if you use a wallet that supports these domains, then you could type in theojo.crypto, and then that would automatically be corresponding to my actual addresses. So it makes it way easier to remember or share, oh, send it to this address instead of, you know, typing out this whole long number that someone has to copy and paste. And again, this domain exists as an NFT. So whoever owns that NFT for that particular domain then is able to control where it's directed to. And actually some wallets do actually support it already, such as Coinbase supports, I believe, both the .crypto and the .eth domain names. So if it's set up correctly, then you can send to one of those addresses using Coinbase Wallet. Now you might be wondering where are these NFT things actually stored? And it's important to understand that the NFT is basically just a token of metadata essentially, not the video itself being stored in the blockchain. So usually what happens is instead of actually storing an image piece of artwork on the blockchain as the NFT, the NFT basically usually will contain maybe a hash of that image file. And a hash is basically an algorithmically generated string that uniquely identifies a particular file. So for example, take any image file and then you generate a hash from it. That hash will be completely unique and only for that image. And if anyone else tries to generate a hash from that specific file, they will get the same exact string. So they'll know, okay, this hash corresponds to this image always. If you were to change one bit or one pixel of that image file, it would generate a completely different hash. So the idea is you store the hash of the file on the NFT, and then you store the actual image somewhere else, maybe on your own server or whatever else. And then whoever owns that NFT, because they have the hash, then you can still know, okay, this is actually the image that they own through this NFT because I can see that the hashes match. And it's important to use something like a hash because say the NFT just pointed to a link on some server, even if it's the original creative server, well then whoever controlled that server could replace the original image file with something else with the same image name, but it has the same link. And then that NFT would now be corresponding to something completely different. So it has to be that hash. And then that hash will always correspond to that exact image file. And you might be wondering, well, why not to store the image itself on the blockchain? And I mean, I guess you could if it was really small, but for the most part, it's prohibitively expensive to store any real amount of anything other than text on the blockchain. So at this point, a lot of people are asking, wait a minute, why do these NFTs even have any kind of value anyway in the first place? Well, I would ask you, why do people collect anything at all? And one argument I read, which I kind of agree with, is there are probably two main reasons why an NFT may have value. The first is utility. It could be actually used for something, either in the virtual world or in a game or in the real world, which we can get to in a second. And the second reason is provenance, basically the origin or the history of that thing. So the first one, utility. Again, this is some kind of benefit you get simply from owning that specific NFT. This could be, for example, concert tickets. Maybe someone who is is running a concert, issues all the tickets as NFTs. That obviously has a benefit. If you have the NFT, you can get into the concert. Pretty easy to understand. Another thing could be virtual items that have some kind of use. Maybe it's in a video game or something where if you own the NFT for a particular game item, then you can use that item in game. And that obviously has a use for it. Now, again, the next one is provenance, which is not again, a new concept. The definition is history of ownership of a valued object or work of art or literature. So this one is probably easiest to understand the context of artwork. You could ask, why is the original Mona Lisa worth more than a mass printed poster? It's the same exact thing. You can look at it, it's the same picture, but obviously the original Mona Lisa is the one that Leonardo da Vinci physically touched. It's the first one he made. Obviously that's gonna have a lot more value to more people than some random reprint. And theoretically, just like the original piece of artwork made by Leonardo da Vinci has more value, then you could say that the NFT that the artist himself issued is gonna be more valuable than any other copies, even if you can screenshot and download the other ones. Now there are some other features that are related to NFTs, such as being able to mint multiple versions of that NFT, and then you basically have one of 50, just like you might have one of 50 different pieces of an artwork that an artist might sign. Same idea, you can mint 50 of them, then it's kind of like a limited edition or just one of them. And also a lot of platforms that sell NFTs have a feature where anytime the artwork is resold, the original artist can actually choose to get a percentage of the resale value, which I think is actually huge for artists going forward because right now, say an artist, you know, they sell a thing for 50 bucks and then years later, people realize, oh my gosh, this is actually really popular now. The artist 
only gets the $50 they originally sold it for, but maybe their art now goes for a million dollars. Well, with the NFTs, theoretically, then that person would get a cut every time it gets resold and they basically get increased benefit as their artwork goes up in value. However, that being said, a lot of the royalty systems are platform specific. So if you buy an NFT on one platform and then resell it on a different one, then the artist doesn't get that royalty, which kind of does defeat the purpose. But from my understanding, there are pushes and efforts to get it coded into the contract of the Ethereum smart contract itself so that it'll just happen automatically and not rely on platforms, so it'll happen no matter what. Now, all that being said, I am very, very skeptical about how valuable these NFTs are being considered right now. I think that they really have very little value until there's some kind of mainstream way to like show them off. You know, if you have a really rare trading card or something, then, you know, you can show other people and take a picture and put it on Instagram or whatever and say, yeah, look, I have this particular one. Whereas NFTs right now, you, yeah, within the tiny niche market of NFTs, you can look at someone's wallet and see that they have NFTs, but that is such a small number of people that I think it would take maybe large social media platforms being able to put your NFTs on there to be able to really have any kind of way to show off and people really finding it valuable. Because I mean, if it, it would be kind of cool if you could buy an original NFT from, I don't know, some famous person, and then you can post that as a collection on your Instagram page, and then other people would go and see that. And again, that would have more value because it's something you could simply show off. And of course, there's other NFTs that are actual utility. And I think those definitely are probably gonna be the more useful ones and more commonplace because they actually have real uses. And some possible utility examples, Gary Vaynerchuk, you may know him, the influencer business guy. Basically, he said he has an idea where he would create an NFT that perhaps whoever owned it would for life be able to go to his all his seminars for free and get front row seats or something like that. And then whoever is the one who owns that gets to do that and get that benefit as long as they hold it. So if they resell it, they don't get to do it anymore, only the person who has it in their wallet. Another example I've seen is someone actually is selling 50% of a house in St. Louis as an NFT. So it's a cash flow rental property. So basically the idea is he's selling 50% as an NFT, whoever buys it, then they enter in a contract through an LLC or something that they get part of that house. And I don't know if the law is really up to date enough to support that NFT being traded, but you know, it's something in the possible future where maybe you can buy parts of something just like you might buy shares in a company. Now also there are some drawbacks to NFTs. For example, it's really congesting the Ethereum blockchain right now. There are so many demand for transactions that an individual transaction is going for like anywhere from 50 to $100 for some smart contract transactions, which means if you wanna mint or trade an NFT, it's gonna cost you like 50 bucks at least, probably up to maybe 100. So that's kind of cost prohibitive if you're buying a super cheap NFC, it doesn't really make sense. That being said, there are multiple blockchains that support NFTs. For example, there is Ethereum, which is the biggest blockchain, probably the most well-known, but there is also one called Flow, protocol, which is actually what the NBA Top Shots use. And supposedly that's supposed to be faster or cheaper simply because it's, you know, not on Ethereum, which is pretty expensive. They kind of designed this blockchain to be a little bit more cheaper. But then you kind of got to decide, okay, if I put my NFT on the Flow blockchain, you got to wonder, is this one going to be as used in 50 years, whereas Ethereum is super well known right now to probably be around forever, but this flow blockchain, you know, if people stop using it, then it kind of has less value. So that's just something you got to consider. So yeah, I definitely think NFTs in terms of value are in a big bubble right now. A lot of people are getting hyped up about it, but I don't think that these artwork NFTs are really as valuable as they should be right now, but I do see a lot of benefit from possible utility NFTs in the future. I just don't think we're quite there yet mainstream. So let me know what you guys think. Is this just the dumbest thing ever? We can talk about that down in the comments. If you guys want to keep watching though, the next video I'd recommend is one I actually made a long time ago, basically explaining everything you have to know about Bitcoin. If you've ever been wondering about it, I made that. You can watch right there. It's like 20 minutes long. You'll learn everything you need to know. So thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.